All right, so this lesson is uh, basically about another type of shift that we have, okay? So if we, if I'll, let's just write this equation here, uh, f of x equals negative 2 x plus 1 squared minus 3, something like that, okay? So if we have this function, uh, we know that there is something with x here, so that's going to represent a horizontal shift, right? So... When it's with x, it's a horizontal shift, meaning it's going to go left or right, okay? Uh, on the outside here, this minus 3 is going to be a vertical shift, okay? Meaning it's going to go up or down a certain direction. And as we learned about, the negative in front means that it's going to be a reflected graph. And the last thing we talked about is the two in front, excuse me, let me do a highlighter. The two in front means that we have some sort of vertical stretch or compression. But in this case, because it's bigger than one, it's a stretch. Okay. All right, the one last thing that we need to talk about is a horizontal stretch or compression. Because a lot of you in class were asking, well, is there some type of horizontal thing? Okay, yes, there is. And here is an example, okay? So if I were to graph this out, let me just go ahead and do this problem just to make sure we're all on the same page. All right, it's the parent, and I'll, I'll use my acronym RIGOROUS, okay? So I realize it's a quadratic. Let's graph the parent function, which it starts at 0, 0. Looks something like this. Rough sketch, okay? Uh, I do notice that there is a R reflection, so I'm going to graph it downwards like this because it reflects over the x-axis. Okay, uh, I do notice that there's shifts. The shift is going to be left one because remember we do the opposite of what's this x. So if it's plus one, we usually think, oh, it goes to the right, but we do the opposite, so it goes left one. And this one's going to go down three. So left one, down three. Okay, that's where my new critical point or my vertex is going to be. And then the two in front means it's going to be a little bit more narrow or it's going to be a stretch, a vertical stretch, meaning it's going to be a little taller than usual or my slope's going to be more steep than usual. So that is what my graph would look like, okay? But there's one other kind of uh, shift that we can have, and as I just alluded to, we could have a uh, horizontal compression or stretch, okay? Okay. But this actually changes the game quite a bit, okay? So I'm only going to, so the, I left the original function on the left. Here's the new function on the right, okay? So I'm going to say negative 2, uh, 3x minus 9 squared minus 1. Actually, we'll make it minus 3, okay? So notice how everything else is the same except for what's inside with x, okay? And now normally you think, well, Mr. Schwant, why would that change? It's going to be to the right 9 and down 3. Actually, it's going to be really different, okay? Uh, so here we go. It's still going to be the same process, though, same process. All right, so I had to realize what kind of function this is. Okay, this is a quadratic function. So let's go ahead and graph that quadratic function. Okay, critical point at zero, zero. That's where the vertex is. Goes up like this somewhat. Okay, uh, I do notice that there is a reflection because of the negative right there. So I'm going to graph this going down now because it's going to reflect over the x-axis. Okay, and before I do anything, I notice that there's a 3 in front of the x, which changes actually quite a bit. Okay, so what's going to happen now is I have to get x by itself. So really what you're going to do is you're going to factor that uh, parenthesis. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite the parenthesis right here, 3x minus 9. We're going to ignore the square for right now. But I need to factor the parenthesis to get x by itself. Okay, so what do I do? I actually have to factor out a 3. Okay, so I factor out a 3 and I have x minus 3 now inside. All right, now, what this does is it actually tells me that I'm going to have a shift to the right 3, okay? Because in order to properly do a horizontal shift, 
X has to be by itself. And for every problem we've done, X has been by itself, except for this one problem where I just threw in a 3 in front. Okay? So you factor it out. You have to get X by itself. So it's going to go to the right 3. But here's what the 3 that we factored out does. Okay? Whatever you factor out uh, is going to be our horizontal stretch or compression. Okay? And here's the best way to explain it. So whenever we do the horizontal shift, remember, so it's x minus 3. So we think, oh, it's the opposite. So instead of going to the left 3, you go to the right 3. The compression and the stretch is the same exact thing. Normally, we would look at the 3 and say, oh, that's going to be a stretch because it's bigger than 1. But actually, it's going to be a compression. So whenever it's with x, it's the opposite. It's the same thing. So like with vertical stretches or compressions, we do as it says. With horizontal, we do the opposite. So rather than thinking, oh, it's going to be horizontally stretched, when it's bigger than 1, this is actually horizontally compressed. Okay. So, if I were to graph this normally, okay, so we did the reflection here. If I were to graph this normally, horizontal, I mean horizontally, okay, uh, it would be this, so in red. Horizontally compressed means I actually kind of make it a little bit more narrow, right? So, if I'm compressing it going left to right, so I'm like kind of squeezing both ends left to right, that's what horizontally compressed is because I'm compressing it going horizontally. Okay? So that means I'm compressing it because we do the opposite of what's with x. But, uh, so we discovered that it goes to the right 3, uh, and that we still do what's out here on the same. So it goes to the right 3 horizontally compressed. It goes down 3. Okay? So right 3, down 3 is right here. Okay? And not only is it horizontally compressed, it's also vertically stretched because of the 2. So it's actually going to be super narrow and look something like this, okay? So that kind of gives you a rough idea of horizontally compressed or stretched. So just like with the shift, when we do a horizontal shift left or right, we do the opposite of what's with x. Same thing if there's a number in front of x. You factor it out to get x by itself, and whatever number you factor out, that is the number that you, uh, that you do the opposite of. So we pulled out a 3, and normally we think, okay, that's going to be a stretch. But with x, it's the opposite. We do a compression of 3. Okay, I know that was kind of a lot of information. I'll do another example here. Here we go. So let's do this one. f of x equals uh, 2, 2x minus 1 plus 1. Okay? So hopefully you guys, again, I'm going to write the acronym, RGRS, rigorous. Okay, we realize it's an absolute value function. Okay. Normally it starts at 0, 0. It looks like a V looking something like this. Okay? Uh, and then from here, I notice there's no reflection because there's no negative. Okay? And now let's worry about the shifts. So in this, I have, I have something in front of x. So I'm going to write it in parentheses, 2x minus 1. Okay? And again, I have to factor out what's in front. Now, remember my first example. I'll pull it back up here. I factored out a 3, and it worked out nicely because 3 goes in the 9 three times. So it worked out really good. However, it doesn't always work out that nice. Okay, if I factor out a 2 from this, I have x by itself. Great. But... What I do is, if I have to factor out a 2 from a 1, really when you factor out, it's like you're dividing, so it's really 1 divided by 2, which is just going to be 1 half. Okay. So in this case, uh, it's going to be a horizontal shift, so I'm going to go to the right 1 half, because I had to pull out the 2 to get x by itself. So we go to the right 1 half. Now I observe that I pulled out a 2, and... Normally we think, okay, that's going to be a stretch, but remember, when it's with x, we do the opposite, so it's actually going to be a horizontal compression. Okay, so it's going to be, uh, we're going to squeeze it left to right. And then the last thing I need to observe if, with the shift, so we did a right one half, uh, I see that there's a plus one, so we go up one. 
So write one half up to one puts me about here. Okay, I have a horizontal compression and a vertical stretch, meaning it's going to be super skinny, skinnier than usual. Because notice how I am, here I'll kind of draw it to the sides here. I am compressing it horizontally this way. I am also pulling the graph up by a vertical stretch. So horizontal compression, vertical stretch makes that red graph really, really uh, taller or skinnier than usual. Okay. So let me do uh, another couple of examples here. Uh, let's do it with a cubic function. Okay. Uh, let's do it for uh, h of x equals, let's do a 1 fourth, 3x minus 5 cubed minus 1. Okay? Man, that has a lot of stuff going on in there, but let's do this. We got this. Okay? Using rigorous, I realize it's a cubic function. Okay? So critical point at zero, 0, goes from down to up, something like that. Okay. All right, uh, there's no reflection uh, because there's no negative in front. Now let's deal with the shifts. First thing I realize is something in front of x. So I'm going to write that parenthesis off to the side here, 3x minus 5. Okay. Uh, I have to factor out that 3 because I have to get x by itself. So I'll factor out the 3, leaving me x. And when I factor it out, it's really like I'm dividing. So 5 divided by 3. Well, I can't do that. I'll just leave that 5 thirds. All right. So what this tells me is that I'm going to go to the right 5 thirds because we do the opposite of what's with x. And the 3 on the outside means I have a horizontal compression because normally we think, oh, well, if it's a number bigger than 1, we do a stretch. But remember, if it was with x, we have to do the opposite. All right, and then I notice there's a minus 1 here, so it's going to go up 1. No, excuse me, down 1. We do it, what it says on the outside, so down 1. So right 5 thirds, which is about 2, so I'll put it about there. And down 1 puts me about here on my graph. Okay. And it's a horizontal compression meaning I need to uh, I'm going to squeeze it on both sides this way and this way but the one-fourth tells me that's going to be vertically compressed as well meaning I need to squeeze it this way and this way okay so not only is this going to be horizontally compressed left to right it's going to be vertically compressed up and down so vertical compression. Okay, so here's how I would graph that with a horizontal compression and a vertical compression. It would actually kind of almost balance out a little bit. That's actually a horrible example. So, it looks something like this. If you think about it, if you multiply 3 times 1 fourth, it comes out to be 3 fourths, which is pretty close to 1. So you'll notice that it's rather close to the parent function in the way that it curves. Okay? But I actually need to draw my graph through the critical value there. Okay? So, uh, so it kind of gets confusing here and there. What's most important to me is that you have to recognize that if there's a number with x, you have to factor that number out so that you can see what the true horizontal shift is. And once you factor that number out, it also has an impact on whether it will be a horizontal compression or a stretch. Okay, last example I'm going to do for you is a trig function. Yay, trig. All right, let's do uh, m of x equals, let's do 2 sine of 3x. No, just to make it simple on us, we'll do 2x. Okay? All right, so for this example, uh, again, using our acronym RIGORUS, R-G-R-S. All right, I realize it's a sine function, a normal sine function. Okay? Starts at 0, 0. At pi over 2... 
At pi over 2, it reaches up to 1. I'll put 1 right here. Okay, at pi, comes back down to 0. At 3 pi over 2, it goes down to negative 1. And at 2 pi, it's back at 0. So my normal sine function looks like this. Okay, uh, and that's the graph. There's no reflection. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take care of the stretches right now because with trig functions, it's better to do stretches than shifts. Okay, so I normally know, and this is still true, uh, the two in front means I'm going to have a vertical stretch, meaning I have to stretch the graph all the way up to two. The ones at zero stay on zero, and the one at negative one stretches down to negative 2, okay, so now it's going to go like this. Now, the last thing we have to discuss is the 2 in front of x right there, okay? Last thing we're going to discuss is the 2 in front of x. When the 2 is in front of x, what that means is I'm going to have some type of horizontal change, okay? Now, remember when I said one cycle of pi is 2 pi. I mean, one cycle of sine is 2 pi, right? Because it's going to keep repeating that pattern from 0 to 2 pi, and then 2 pi to 4 pi, 4 pi to 6 pi. So it's going to repeat that up-down pattern forever and ever. But one complete cycle of sine goes from 0 to 2 pi. All right? So, but in this graph, 2x equals 2 pi. Okay? So what happens to get x by itself, again, if we factor it out, we divide by 2. Right, because factoring, dividing, same kind of sort of same thing. X equals the twos cancel pi. So what this tells me is that my period length or my cycle length isn't going to go to two pi anymore. My whole graph needs to fit from zero to pi. My whole graph needs to fit in that space. So see how it goes up and down from zero to two pi. What I need to do is my graph needs to go from zero to pi. Okay, so that means my critical values have to change. So what I do, if I divided every, if I divided to get pi by 2, I have to divide all my critical values by 2, okay? Which really with fractions, you just multiply by 1 half, okay? So multiply all these by 1 half, multiply by 1 half, multiply by 1 half, okay? So my new critical value... For pi over 2, if we multiply straight across, it's pi over 4. And pi over 4 is right here. Okay? If I multiply across here, it's going to be pi over 2, which is right here. If I multiply straight across here, 3 pi over 4 is what I'll get there, and that's right here on my graph. 3 pi over 4. And then 2 pi times 1 half gives me 2 over 2, which is just 1. 1 pi is right here. So those are all my critical values on the orange marks there. But my graph's going to have to start at 0, where it normally starts. It gets stretches all the way up to 2 at pi over 4, comes back down at pi over 2, comes all the way down here at 3 pi over 4, and then back up here at pi. So I go up, I come down, and come back up again. So the whole sine graph got vertically compressed, I mean, excuse me, horizontally compressed. So there was a horizontal compression because of the 2, right? And we do the opposite of what's with x, so we compress rather than stretch. And if I divide it by 2, again, it gives me where the graph should end, and then I have to multiply everything or divide everything by 2 to find my new critical values. We're going to do a lot more with this. This is just an intro, but hopefully this gives you an idea.